Welcome to this podcast on false positive seborrheic keratosis. SEP case, as we all know, are usually uh, very easy to recognize already from a clinical point of view because they have a characteristic stuck-on appearance on the skin and, uh, of course, with uh, dermoscopy is even easier, but usually uh, clinical examination is already uh, enough. Uh, certainly, there are some SEP cases which are clinically not so uh, typical and especially in these cases, Uh, dermoscopy helps a lot, like in this example, which clinically is a little bit uh, strange, but dermatoscopically it's clear-cut uh, that this is a seborrheic keratosis because uh, we can see uh, a very uh, typical feature of CPK, milia-like cysts being predominantly present. However, even with the addition of dermoscopy, some CPKs remain uh, difficult to recognize and sometimes they prompt us to excise them uh, in order to rule out a malignant tumor. First of all, reticulated uh, seborrheic keratosis and solar ledigo. Which is the problem here? The problem is that uh, theoretically we know that a pig- the presence of pigment network uh, should be suggestive of a melanocytic tumor. Uh, and in fact, this is an exception uh, of this rule. So reticulated subcase do exist. Uh, the network of uh, SEPKs or solar lendigens is typified by a abrupt, an abrupt border and also is, uh, consists of large holes and thin lines, which is somehow explained histopathologically because the reed ridges in uh, lentiginous hyperplasia are typically very thin, elongated but thin, as compared to the reed ridges uh, in a junctional nevus, for example, on your right. So, this is the difference. The, uh, the network of solar lendigo consists of large holes, very evident holes and thinner lines, and also the periphery, which is uh, the border is abrupt in solar lendigo, while in nevi, uh, uh, as we all know, uh, network is fading out at the periphery and uh, the holes are not so evident as they are in solar lendigo. This is schematically uh, the difference, okay? Large holes, evident holes uh, in uh, solar lendigo as compared to a nevus. And in fact, sometimes the holes are so large that uh, a network is not any more evident, but they form a pattern of circles. Uh, and uh, this is highly suggestive, again, of uh, a seborrheic keratosis or a solar lendigo. Here again, another example of a solar lendigo displaying uh, circles. And here an example uh, of a comparative example between a solar lendigo on your left, very evident holes of the network, and nevus on your right, uh, where the holes are not so evident and the lines are somehow thicker. Here is a comparison between a melanoma and the heavily pigmented solar lendigo. As you can see, uh, in the melanoma case, the network is severely disturbed, uh, so the architecture of the network is completely destroyed, while in solar lendigo we still can see the typical network with large holes uh, and uh, hyperpigmentation in uh, one part of the lesion. A specific subtype of solar lendigo is the so-called ink spot lendigo, which is nothing more but a solar lendigo uh, which is heavily uh, pigmented and of course the network is again abruptly uh, cut at the border. Another example here of ink spot lentigo with uh, the abrupt ending of the heavily pigmented network. So, the clue for reticulated SEPK and solar lendigo is this so-called stretched network with large holes or even circles. The second uh, subtype of SEPK, which is difficult to recognize, is the so-called melanoacanthoma, which in fact is a heavily pigmented seborrheic keratosis. The problem here is that the intense pigmentation does not allow the visualization of traditional SEPK uh, criteria. The only criterion of SEPK which is retained, which is not hidden 
by the presence of uh, intense pigmentation is the border, the abrupt border. So this might be the only clue that allows us to recognize uh, that this is uh, nothing more but a heavily pigmented seborrheic keratosis. So sharp demarcation is the main clue to recognize melanoacanthoma. Then the third subtype of SEPK, which is really tricky, really difficult to recognize uh, sometimes, is the so-called irritated seborrheic keratosis. Irritated SEPK is typically a non-pigmented tumor, typified mainly by the presence of keratin, of course, but also vessels. Many vessels, usually all over the surface of the lesion we see vessels, and typically they are surrounded by white color which corresponds to the presence of epidermal hyperplasia. Morphologically, the vessels might be herping, might be short linear or even dotted sometimes and always surrounded by white halos. Here you can see another example of a papillomatous uh, lesion uh, which is typified by the presence of many papillae and we, within each one of them we can see vascular structures. Of course there is also trauma uh, in the, uh, at the top uh, but in the parts of the lesion that we can see uh, uh, we can more or less everywhere see vessels surrounded by whitish halos. Of course, when hyperkeratosis is intense, then it's not so easy, but still in the parts of the lesion that we can see, the only uh, criterion that is evident are vessels surrounded by whitish halos. And another example, vessels surrounded by whitish halos more or less everywhere. Definitely there are some irritated subcases which are morphologically completely atypical, like in this case, and of course here uh, we, cannot, we cannot save uh, an excision, uh, mainly because of the differential diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma, this is the main differential diagnosis here. But as a rule, the difference between squamous cell carcinoma and SEPK is that in seborrheic keratosis, usually vessels are more or less symmetrically distributed all over the surface of the lesion, first, and second, that in squamous cell carcinoma, we usually see additional features, so not only vessels surrounded by halos, but also uh, uh, follicles surrounded by halos or atypical vessels, or at least structureless uh, white areas. So, uh, irritated SEPK, the main clue is that uh, ve vessels surrounded by white uh, halos are the only feature and usually symmetrically distributed all over the surface of the lesion. Then, clonal seborrheic keratosis. Here, the problem is the presence of these blue globules, blue clods. And, of course, the main differential diagnosis here is basal cell carcinoma, because we know that blue clods, blue globules, are considered a clue for uh, basal cell carcinoma. And, in fact, uh, it's uh, quite tricky uh, to avoid biopsy here, unless some Clues, some classic SEPK clues are simultaneously present, like milia like cysts or sharp uh, border in, uh, in this example. So, in clonal SEPK, uh, uh, we can be based only on the presence of additional uh, clues of uh, seborrheic keratosis. And the last one is the so called lichenoid keratosis, lichen planus like keratosis, which is nothing more than a seborrheic keratosis or a solar lendigo undergoing regression. Of course, at the beginning of the regression process, if some parts of the tumor are still evident, like in this example, where in the lower left part we can see the remnants of seborrheic keratosis, then maybe uh, we are able to recognize that this was a seborrheic keratosis undergoing uh, regression. But a little bit later, we see only structures associated to the regression process, and the main structure associated to the regression process is the presence of gray-colored dots or small dots and when they are small, they call the, we call them granules, so small grey granules. Uh, this is the prototype of uh, lichenoid keratosis, which histopathologically corresponds to the presence of melanophages.
the problem is that in end stages of regression, when the only thing that we can see is gray granules, then it's really impossible to differentiate between a fully regressive seborrheic keratosis, like in this example, or also like in this example, and a fully regressive melanoma, which is really mimicking uh, a lichen planus like keratosis, like in this example. So, the uh, useful message is that since we cannot make a differentiation, at least at this stage of regression, end stage regression should warrant uh, a biopsy of the lesion in order to rule out melanoma. So, in the presence of additional features of CPK or in the presence of symmetric large gray, gray glo globules, maybe we are able to recognize uh, lichenoid keratosis. But in the, uh, in the case of a fully regressed uh, Seb K, where the only thing that we can see are many gray granules, then in this case we cannot avoid a biopsy. Of course, we should always remember that uh, excising sub some subcases because of diagnostic doubts is not a malpractice. 